of all the species that have already set foot on my lands, humans probably are one of the most complex, one of the most interesting. I've been watching over them, seen them evolve centuries after centuries. It seems that today, they might have a crucial choice to make. We're at that point right now, in the 2020s, where civilization could collapse, or we can take it to the higher order. Humanity needs to make foundational choices. Everywhere, some of them understood that something has to be done to maintain the original harmony. You are seeing a lot of uh, problem due to what's happening with a lot of, uh, of, of CO2 emission and beyond expectation. Believe me, I wish things were different. So whether over the next 10, 20 years, we collapse or we break through to an amazing new world depends on our choices. Solar energy was criticized in the past because it required huge support from the, the public. Oh, here we are again. The mainstream analysts were saying, no, the transition, not even disruption, is going to be slow. It's going to happen in the 2040s or 50s. It's going to be expensive. Does this technology is reliable? Can we make a lot out of it? What will be the future of this technology? We looked at the following question. Is an electric power system composed only of solar, wind, and batteries. Possible. Is it possible by 2030? A lot of people don't think it's possible. My co-author and me, we looked at the history of humanity, essentially 10,000 years of humanity. Our conclusions were astonishing. Well, I have mine too, I'm afraid. The same processes of change and disruption that apply at the product level, at the sector level, also apply at the societal level. We are now in the 2020s on the cusp of the fastest, deepest transformation of humanity in history. Essentially, we're at the end of what we call the extraction order. So it looks like we're heading towards new lands, just like a pirate movie. I'm actually beginning to enjoy this. I just wonder, a whole new world. Is anybody working on it? At Ines, we are very optimistic. We are seeing a lot of hints, a lot of, of things going to the right direction. I'm surrounded with a lot of nice and competent and reliable people, and they are doing real things to get it, to get, to get the change done. We are serving this strong ambition of Europe and the whole world of decreasing the CO2 emission. Oh, sounds like allies to me. But wait, who are you again? Very simple, my name is Anis Juigny. I'm Frederick Stork. I'm Tony Siva. And I'm... The Earth. But you can call me Gaia. I'm heading the solar technology department at CA Ines. I am the director of energy transition and innovation at CNR in Lyon, the French leading producer of exclusively renewable energy. I'm the co-founder of RethinkX. CA, as you know, is more than 20,000 researchers in France on different activity, one of them is the energy sector. Our mission is really clear. It's innovation for industry. It needs to be competitive, it needs to be eco-friendly, and you need to make it in, in a very short time in total agreement with the common roadmap between the industrial partner and us. We want to recreate an ecosystem, an industrial ecosystem for manufacturing high quality and reliable and economically viable PV system components. It's not about hope necessarily. I mean, a lot of people told me in the past, you're too optimistic, but it's not about optimism. It's about data. It's about science. It's the convergence of technologies that enable the big disruptions, the 10X disruptions. If you go back to the smartphone, both the iPhone and the Android came out 2007. Why 2007? That's because all the technologies to build a $600 smartphone converged 2007. Another lesson of disruption is convergence. Wait a minute, what's a disruption? I, I mean, a 10x disruption. 
Henry Ford used to say that when people asked him in the early 1900s about cars, they said that all they wanted was um, a faster horse. You know, he was not building, the car was not a faster horse. The, the car was a 10x disruption. It went 10x faster, it went 10x further, it was 10x cheaper, and so on. But why did nobody see it coming? The fast horse syndrome. Before disruptions happen, mainstream analysts and experts and insiders um, essentially have the what I call the fast horse syndrome. The, the car allowed us to build a whole new economy, and for good or worse, right? Uh, it enabled the oil economy, it enabled the car economy, it enabled suburban life, it enabled the highway system. So essentially 20th century society was built on that innovation, the car. Disruptions, once they tip, once the old system ruptures and the new system tips, it happens very, very quickly. Okay, now we have the ideas, but ideas remain ideas until people start believing in it, right? The financial sector is increasingly turning away from these historical activities to go on more sustainable sectors, which is a source of growth and which is more in accordance uh, to the expectations of citizens. We have seen that all those big guys getting very interested to renewable and putting a lot of investment. Today, it's a part of their portfolio the, with the fossil fuel and other sort of technology, which, by the way, decreasing or disappearing, letting the place for renewable energy. That sounds way better. Oh, sorry. Carry on. They will be one of the main players pushing renewable to a new phase, to a second phase, completely different than the one that we have seen till today, because we are not anymore fighting about the PV system, is it competitive or not, so it's reliable technology, and the whole PV system is getting uh, really more and more reliable and more and more economically competitive uh, towards a smart solution which can be combined everywhere. It's in there and how to get it sustainable for long term. It will be a new era for renewable energy and for PV with those players who really are very present in the energy sector. A new era, you say? How inspiring is that? I wonder how far we could push this transformation. What can we expect? Will our everyday environment change as well? Think about the idea that everything will be energy, PV is cheaper than structural plywood. So don't just make cheaper solar panels. We're gonna have cars with you know, solar on top. We're gonna have you know, houses, and not just on the rooftop. For instance, we are currently working with Ines at CNR to integrate solar on the Rhone dikes. We are trying to design linear power plants rather than rectangular, which will provide uh, great sources of production, around one megawatt per kilometer. That sounds amazing! That changes everything. This implies opportunities for the relocation of the industry, so it also implies job creation. We must now focus on making it more efficient to meet more the demand for electricity, thanks to a better integration in the electric grids, thanks to storage, and thanks to uses, which is the objective of the next 2S. We started that in the past, one megawatt module was huge, but today a lot of people are talking about one gigawatt power plants. And it's going to, if you, if you are able to make one, then you are able to make ten. And this is what people in Australia, they want to make. And this is what people in Abu Dhabi or in Qatar or in Saudi Arabia, they already made. Elon Musk saw the opportunity space, right? And solar entrepreneurs saw the opportunity space and the folks who've been doing batteries for 10 years saw the opportunity space, right? Today, it's the energy source is here, is reliable. There is a trust of normal people and decision makers. For sure, then there will be a very bright future. We came up with, uh, with one sentence which can summarize everything. And in this, this sentence says, PV everywhere, for everybody and forever. <laughs>